In the second lectures, I'd like to explain the extrasolar planet. We human beings try to discover planets outside of the solar system, but it is quite difficult to discover the planet outside of the solar system because planet does not emit light by itself. Instead, planet reflected light from a central star. First successful discovery of the extrasolar planet was done by the Switzerland astronomer Mayo and Kero in 1995. They published a paper in Nature's for the discovery of the first extrasolar planet, orbiting around 51 peg in four days. It is quite surprising to discover such a planet located very close to the central stars. By examining the position of the gas giant planet in the solar systems, we believe that such a gas giant planet should be located far away from the central stars. The first discovered extrasolar planet is very different from our expectations. The method to discover the first extrasolar planet is a radial velocity survey. A star and a planet rotate around the center of mass. If the blue planet is moving away from us, then the star is moving toward us. If a planet is moving toward us, a star is moving away from us. Because of the motion of the stars, Received light is uh, Doppler shifted. When a star is moving toward us, the light from a star is uh, blue shifted. If the star is moving away from us, the light emitted from a star is red shifted. Switzerland group successfully discovered the first extrasolar planet using the radial velocity survey method. We'd like to estimate the rotational speed of our stars around the center of gravity. Angular velocity of the system can be calculated using the square root. G is a gravitational constant times sum of the masses of the planet and the stars. Over the A cubed, A is the distance between the star to the planet. If we consider the mass of a star is much, much more massive than the mass of the planet, then we can approximate. Angular velocity is given by the square root g mass of the star over a cubes. The rotational speed of a star can be calculated mp over m star plus mp times a. This is the distance between the center of gravity to the stars times angular Velocities. And if you consider the mass of a planet is a Jupiter mass, and if a planet is located at 1 AU from a central star, the mass of a star is a solar mass. Then velocity is about 28 meter per second. So if you convert from the meter per second to the kilometer per hour, it's about 100 kilometer per hour like a speed of a car in the highways. Actually, the star is rotating around the center of mass. This is the center of mass. They're making a rotational motion then with the angular velocity of the capital omegas. So angle between the to the observers is expressed omega times the times. So projected on the direction to the observers is expressed v sub x is equal to the minus p sub star times sine omega t. In general, orbital plane should be inclined with respect to the observers. Star is making a rotational motion on this planes. So this is orbital planes. Observer is observing in these directions. <coughs> orbital plane has the angles of the eye. Then projected velocities can be calculated if you consider this triangle. This should be the eye. Then projected velocity is expressed v sub x times sin i. k is a minus m sub p sin i over m sub stars square root g m sub star over a times sin omega t. So we can observe the repeated change of the velocity of the k. If you draw the magnitude of the k as a function of the t, you can observe the repeated change of the k. 
period to pi over omega. So from the this equations, you can calculate semi-major axis of the A. You can find the largest value of the K. We have already discovered A. So from the this equations, you can estimate M sub P sin I. We obtain the data of the M sub P sin I and A. Sometimes I will give you the plot. We can determine the M sin I from the observation of an extrasolar planet. Assume that the orbital planes of the extrasolar planet randomly oriented. Calculate the expected mass of the extrasolar planet. We draw the normal vector to the orbital planes, then I. If you consider the radius of the pairs is a month, length is expressed sin I. If you consider that this uh, circle, the radius of the sine i, they take a small angle on this circle. And then this angle is a d phi. Actually, we'd like to press infinitesimal solid angle. This length is expressed as sine i d phi. And then also, you could consider small d i. So this is d i. Small solid angle is expressed sine i d phi times d i. Then we'd like to calculate the sine i average over the solid angles. So total solid angle is expressed 4 pi. If you consider the spheres with a radius of the ones, then total surface area of a sphere is expressed 4 pi. And then this is 0 to the pi d i. 0 to the 2 pi d phi. Then sine i. It should be multiplied by sine i. This part is equal to 2 pi. So you can calculate. It becomes 1 over 2. 0 to the pi di sine squared i. So sine squared i. We use addition formula to become 1 over 2 minus 1 over 2 cosine 2 i. You can use uh, this formulas for the uh, sine squared i. So it becomes 1 over 4, 0 to the pi, di, 1 minus cosine 2i. Then we could perform the integrals, 1 over 4, i minus 1 over 2, sine 2i, 0 to the pi. So it becomes pi over 4. So if you take a uh, average of the mp sin i, it becomes pi over 4 mp. So from the, this equation, mass of the planet can be calculated 4 over pi times mp sin i. So this is about 1.27 mp sin i. So the expected mass of extrasolar planet can be calculated by multiplying the 1.3 with the observed mass. This is the answer to the practice 1.1. Then sometimes we apply the another method to discover the extrasolar planet. The one of the most popular method used in the space telescope is a transit search. The planet is rotating around the stars. When the planet is uh, passing in front of the stars, because the temperature of the planet is much, much lower than the temperature of the stars, the surface area of a planet is much darker than the surface area of our stars, then brightness of the star is going to drop while a planet is passing in front of our stars. If the planet is located here, whole surface of the stars we can observe. But uh, this planet is moving, moving. Once the planet is moving in front of the stars, the shadow is formed by a planet. The brightness is dropped while the planet is transiting. If the planet is moving away from the surface of a star, then brightness is returned to the original brightness of a star. Okay, by observing the repeated change of the brightness of a star, we could discover an extrasolar planet. Probability of the transit. Extrasolar planet is rotating around the stars. The blue curves show the orbit of an extrasolar planet. If we observe the, this system from the Earth, planet never transit in front of the surface of the stars. Then we cannot observe the transiting event of a planet. The, there is no change of the bright of the stars. So also, it's not happen if we observe the Earth. 
if we observe here, we could observe the transiting event of a planet. So maximum angle can be obtained here and here. Then these angles, if you express the thetas, this is exactly equal to the theta. Then tangent thetas is expressed R stars over A. R star is a radius of a stars. A is a distance between the star to a planet. Height is a H, uh, length of the Y. This is also you can express H over Y. Then if you take uh, angles from the center of the stars, tangent phi, express H over A plus Y. Usually the A is much much shorter than the Y, so it's nearly H over Y. So this is H over Y is equal to the tangent theta. You can find that the phi is nearly equal to the theta. We can use a theta to estimate the phi. We could consider the surface areas with a radius of the ones. So solid angles we would like to consider. So this is a one. Radius of the circle can be estimated. So this is phi. Phi equal nearly equals the theta. Cosine theta. So circumference of this circle calculated 2 pi cosine theta. This length is expressed sine phi. So it's equal to nearly equal to sine theta. So this length is a 2 sine theta. Then areas, partial surface area of the spheres with a radius of 1 can be expressed 2 pi cosine theta times 2 sine theta. And the total surface area of a sphere is expressed 4 pi. So this is the probabilities we could observe an extrasolar planet using the transit search. 2 pi times 2 is a 4 pi. And the cosine theta, when the theta is nearly to the zero, so it becomes one. But you have to remember the theta should be expressed with radians. Probability is expressed as theta. And the theta is equal to the nearly expressed R stars over A. Probability is expressed the ratios of the radius of a star to the distance to a planet. If you substitute planet discovered around the 51 peg, semi-major axis is a 0.052 AU, and the radius of a star is a 1.266 radius of the sun, then probability becomes a 0.11. Planet similar to an extrasolar planet discovered near the 51 peg can be discovered with a probability of the 10%. The practice, an extrasolar planet is located at 1 AU from a central star with a solar radius. Find the probability of observing the transit of the extrasolar planet. So we use the equation for the probability to discover an extrasolar planet. We substitute the A is 1 AU. Radius of a star is a solar radius. Then probability 0.11 times 1 AU over 0.05 2AU. R star is a radius of a sun, 1.26 radius of the sun. Then you can calculate. So it becomes 0.0045. So if we observe about 200 stars with a planet located at 1 AU, we have a chance to discover a planet. So finally, distribution of a discovered extrasolar planet. The vertical line is the mass of the planet with a unit of the Jupiter mass. Horizontal line is the distance from a stars. And the other figures show the eccentricity of the discovered planet as a function of the semi-major axis. Some of the planet has a Jupiter size of the planet. Some of the planet might be less massive planet. So a wide variety of the planet we discovered. And also the surprising result for the eccentricity we could observe. Some planet has a really huge eccentricity. We call that such a planet is an eccentric planet due to the large eccentricity. We discovered a planet with a diverse properties such as hot Jupiters and eccentric planets. Okay, this is the end of the sections for the extrasolar planet. We review the solar system planet and the extrasolar planet in this first lectures.